Back here at home in a Fulton County courtroom today, talk about when former President Trump could go to trial in Georgia for his alleged involvement in efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. But that wasn't the only issue during an hours long hearing. Fox Size Tyler Fingert was in the courtroom and joins us now live at the Fulton County Courthouse with the details. Tyler. Yeah, Russ, good evening to you. No trial date has been set yet for former President Donald Trump in the Fulton County election meddling case, but it was a topic of discussion today. It came on the same day that Mr. Trump's attorneys and several of their co his co-defendants attorneys argued that the charges against them should be dropped. If the state's now saying August is the earliest we can try this case. Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee questioned prosecutors Friday about why they want to put former President Donald Trump on trial in August, just a matter of months before the 2024 presidential election. The former president is one of more than a dozen indicted for their alleged role to overturn the 2020 presidential election in the state. It would be the state's response that having this trial on election day is election interference. This trial does not constitute election interference. Earlier in the day, several defense attorneys argued that their clients should not be charged. They say the First Amendment should protect them. The defendant's statements and actions here are challenging the processes of the 2020 presidential election. It is political free speech. Former President Trump's lead Georgia lawyer Steve Sadow has been silent since he took over the case in August. But Friday, he joined in on the First Amendment argument. And when you do that as applied constitutionally with the First Amendment, you find that it violates free speech freedom of uh, petitioning, all the expressions that the First Amendment is designed to protect, and therefore the, the indictment needs to be dismissed. There was also an argument that the so-called fake electors were not fake and that the Electoral Count Act allows an alternative group of electors to meet if certain deadlines haven't been met. But prosecutors are fighting back against that. They are representing themselves as the actual electors certified by the governor, duly elected and qualified, and they were never that. A decision on whether those charges will be dropped will come in the weeks ahead. We're live in downtown Atlanta tonight. Tyler Fingert, Fox 5 News. A lot of facts to sort through. Tyler, thanks so much.